Her name, Jessica. Her age, about 15 years young. This was her first year into her high school career. And she loved the thought of playing organized volleyball so she can try to escape the alcohol. She witnessed daily her parents take one drink, two drink, three drink, four. Her daddy couldn't take the responsibilities of a man anymore, so he left. No verbal affirmation, no father-daughter dates, no bedtime stories, only Disney movies on replay. Like every other teenager, Jessica's eyes were enslaved to mobile devices, basing her value off the number of views and likes. She would do the most to post the perfect photo, video, and story on the gram. Hashtag fam, monkey see, monkey do, not just at school, Snapchat too, but at home. Watching mom satisfy her substantial addictions, creating mother-daughter physical confliction. Mama not knowing her baby girl was watching and learning, losing her innocence at the age of 12 because she wanted to be just like mommy. Fast forward three years, 15 looking 21, all the makeup that's done, seeking for attention and acceptance, Jessica agreed to a friend request and his name was James. You see, James started double tapping photos as he's played this game before. Likes turn into comments, comments into direct messages, direct messages leading into direct encounters on the pier with their fingers interlaced as they pace their walk, breathing in the San Francisco breeze. Like many naive and vulnerable young girls, Jessica cherished the attention. You see, grooming was not a foreign concept to the veteran James. He knew exactly what to say, how to say, and when to say it. His words pierced her as if Cupid himself was shooting arrows to her heart. And this is what James intended from the start. Jessica was shot by a deceptive left spell, and her mother, she didn't even tell. You see, one month passed by, and just like Kevin Durant, she decided to move in hopes of a ring. The blood pumping because of the unknown. The excitement and adrenaline rushed down her vein. And unlike KD, her work would lead to pain. Not wasting any time, deceptive James rushed Jessica to work. She refused. And for the second time in her life, experienced abuse. The thought of Jessica and James's happily ever after was no longer a fantasy. She wanted out, but was reminded if she ever left, her mom would catch a bullet in between the eyes. So she was forced not to compromise. And look, not to be too graphic. In order for Jessica to cope with her new occupation, she took substances to a whole new association. Knowing this new reality would be the death of her. Wishing three times to go back to the days of her Disney movie replays. However, Jeannie didn't come out when she rubbed the lamp. Feeling like Elsa and Anna frozen in her prison. Daydreaming of a hot summer's day, Olaf being held down by the Cruella de Vils, feeling as if she was the 102nd Dalmatian because she found out James had multiple puppies to play with. But he insisted, you got a friend in me, you got a friend in me. And Jessica could internally see his Pinocchio nose growing because all of the lies and no one around her could hear her cries and he would say, Akuna Matata, what a wonderful phrase, but Jessica was worried for the rest of her days. This was her problem, see, no philosophy, no Simba. Every night she would pray for Prince Charming to come and wake her up from her slum, but all she got were Johns. All she got where John's day after day, night after night, knowing this beauty's tale was as old as time, selling her voice to the beast that resided under the sea. And yeah, it was wetter, but no, it was not better. No pixie dust to fly her to Neverland, no Tinkerbell, no Peter Pan again. James would talk her up, believing she can go the distance with this Hercules, and she realized she was stuck in Tarzan's jungle with no help. And yeah, the water was unsan unsanitary, unsanitary. No question, Tantor. But like Moana, she wanted to test the waters and how far she'll go. Demigods don't even know. And how long she'll last? Well, statistics say seven years from our first day. Even though Jessica has no one around, some organizations seek the lost to be found. They believe in Ohana. They believe in family. They believe in no one gets left behind. They'll even travel across the sea. Peace Sherman 42, Wallaby Way, Sydney. 
but she continues to cry. She only wants one thing, to die. It's time to wake up. It's time to be the hands. It's time to be the feet because there are others like Jessica living in defeat. Substances and Disney memories are the only way she can cope. Let's do something past today's step of hope.